human body proportions. In this video lesson, you will discover the classical human body proportions that every fine artist must know. This knowledge will help you to draw realistic human figures not only from life, but also from your memory and imagination. Without knowing the proportions of the human body, it's almost impossible to avoid mistakes in figurative art. So let's begin one of the most important lessons in this course. I will do a quick sketch of a standing male figure. The vertical line that runs through the middle of the figure, from top to bottom, is called the medial line. It is the central axis of the figure. The medial line divides the body into two equal halves, left and right. Let's divide the figure's height in half. I'm using a pencil to measure this proportion. The mark in the middle coincides with the pubic bone of the pelvis. The top half is also divided into two equal parts. Once again, I'm using a pencil to indicate the division. This line marks the location of chest and goes through nipples of a male chest. The top quarter of a figure's height is also halved. The smallest division is one-eighth of the body. This is the size of a head. As you can see, it would fit eight times in the total figure height. Not every adult person has one to eight head to body ratio. On average, this ratio is between one to 6.5 and one to eight. Infants and children have relatively bigger heads, and as they grow, the body becomes considerably taller while the head doesn't grow as much. At the base of the neck there is a notch, which is called the suprasternal notch. It is located just above the breastbone. The Latin name suprasternal comes from two words, supra, above, and sternum, breastbone. This notch is a good indicator of where the line of the collarbone should lie. The distance between the upper edge of the rib cage and the lower end of the breastbone is equal to the height of the head. The upper arm bone is called the humerus. It runs from the shoulder to the elbow. The lower end of the humerus coincides with a line that is three times the height of the head from the top of a human figure when the arm is hanging down. The wrist's position is on the same level as the pubic bone, halfway up the body. Throughout the history of art, human body proportions have not always been measured by heads. Some canons were based on the length of one's feet, thus creating the imperial measurement system. Hands, arms, fingers were also used as a measuring units. The word canon, or set of proportions, comes from Latin and means measuring line. In ancient Egypt, artists used feet as a measuring unit, while the head fit into the body eight times. Early Greek art had a seven and a half head canon while later classical Greek art shifted to eight heads, making legs longer to create an athletic body structure. In the Renaissance, artists rediscovered the classical canons and developed their own. Old masters like Vitruvius, Leonardo da Vinci, Albrecht Dürer, and many others were fascinated by the human body and studied its proportions with a great thirst for knowledge. Let's come back to the drawing. Here is a male figure in profile. It has been drawn in the same eight head canon as the previous one. In side view, the height of the head is the same as its depth, 
so it could be inscribed in a square. The waist has the same depth as does the pelvic region. There are many more proportions, which we will cover in later video lessons. Here is a bonus tip for you. If you are going to the Life Drawing Studio tomorrow and find that you've forgotten most of the information you've learned today, keep in mind the following rules. They will ensure your figurative artwork is well proportioned. 1. The anatomical center of the body is the pubic bone. 2. The distance from the toes to the top of the kneecap is equal to the distance from the top of the kneecap to the iliac crest. And this is the same distance between the pubic bone and the top of the breastbone. 